All right, everybody, welcome to the Burn Bootcamp Podcast. I got one of my best friends in the world here, Hi, Shannon Lamondola, and she is a multi-unit owner of Burn Bootcamp here in the New York area. We're here in her Pittsburgh gym, um, and we have an audience. Hi, guys. Hey. Her, team, her team is here. Team we, rock. Did, we did trainer talk, too, by the way, um, so you guys got to check that out from Pittsburgh as well. Lots of good stuff. Come yeah, on it was really, time. really good. And so, Dola, you know, we've known each other for a very long time now. We're like homies, so this is going to be a fun conversation. And I know a lot of your story, but I really wanted to interview you because bringing it back to Burn Nation will be so important. So many, so many people, as I travel, they uh, were you. Uh, let's say in 2013, right? Where you just found this brand and you were like really excited about it and you didn't know what the future held with it, but you knew there was like some, something there. And so can you zoom us back to like, I love how I found the brand. from, yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell me how you found the brand. She loves the story. Uh, and so that everybody at home uh, knows how you got here. All right. That sounds good. <laughs> so this is my hometown, Western New York. I lived in Charlotte for 20 years. So right after graduating from up this way, moved down to Charlotte, started working at Bank of America, running the rat race, literally tra traveling three, four days a week, corporate America. And my daughter turned five years old. She was about to start kindergarten. And I said, I missed everything. I literally just missed everything. I need to take a break. I'm going to be a stay at home mom. And so I was a stay-at-home mom for about four days. I needed to find a new gym because I was working out in my office at the gym that was there, Uptown Charlotte. And I heard a kid was running free boot camps that were pretty hard out of a parking lot. That was me. I was 24. He was 24 years old. Yeah. He was a kid. <laughs> and so I went, and it was so hard, and it was so awesome. And I was going on Saturdays over and over and over on Saturdays because I thought I needed yoga, and I thought I needed Pilates, and I thought I needed what were uh, step aerobics at the time. This is way back. But uh, about 15 Saturdays in, I realized this is... <laughs> 15 Saturdays. <laughs> roughly. We used to do free Saturday camps. When are you going to join? When are you going to join? When are you going to join? Roughly 15 Saturdays in, I'm like, okay, my body is so sore. I'm seeing so many changes. Kicked by a horse. Like, what are these muscles? I'm feeling things in the shower. I'm like, burns enough. Um, and I adore it. And the community... I thought I was looking for a workout. But I was looking for a community and a groove and... That's what I found, and that's what I realized I wanted every day. Not a workout, it was the community. Yeah, I remember one specific Saturday, so like Shannon is in there, and she's like an old gymnast and does like all these moves, and she's like super flexible and like very athletic, and she's like doing handstands and stuff, and like we're in the gym. I'm like, hey lady, do you realize that we're also here Monday through Friday? <laughs> like you don't only have to come on Saturdays. <laughs> um, but she did, and we had a really good relationship. And then because I saw like your athletic ability and obviously your like bubbly personality, you're so fun to be around. I was like, hey, maybe you could join me and we could be trainers. Come see me after camp. I gotta tell you something. Yeah. It's something big. Yeah. So I was like, what? <laughs> we're getting our own gym. Yeah. We're getting our own gym. We're gonna have four walls. How, what do you say? What do you think about being a trainer? What did you say? Do you remember? I'm a banker. I'm a banker. I'm a banker. <laughs> My degree's in finance. I can't be a trainer. I don't know anything about the human body. You can teach yourself. You're smart. You're athletic. Your, ener your energy is great. So I started studying my butt off, the stay-at-home mom thing. I just needed a little variety, mm -hmm. reward, mm -hmm. a little bit of me back because you lose yourself sometimes. It's a hard gig. Hard gig. Credit to all the moms in the world who spend their time 24-7 doing that. Um, so studying I did, kept coming to camp, watching, memorizing, trying to mimic and learn everything Devin was doing. I called you one day and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, I got blue paint, I'm painting the gym, I'm covered in blue paint, you wanna? And so it happened. Yeah. You had the gym and I kept studying and you needed help. Yep. You were doing every single camp, every single day, 4.30 a week? Uh, yeah, I was doing a 42 a week. I did 42 a week from- By yourself. 2012 to 2017 and then and, two, and then 2000 yeah she would but that was I think there was like um I think we were doing 48 camps at the time so she was covering she would so Morgan would come after she worked at Kellogg's and this is right why, why I went up to Shannon and it was like recruiting her for help is because I was running from 5 a.m to 5 p.m every day and <clears throat> that last camp of the day sometimes like we were in fun to be fit uh, it was like a mm -hmm. gymnastic studio and like we had bumping music it was it was like the music was lit but we also didn't have a mic. <laughs> so I'm literally screaming for 40 plus camps a week over this, over this very loud speaker system. And I physically, like I was so exhausted sometimes at like the Thursday or Friday and Morgan would come after her day job at Kellogg's to come oh. train and then, and then, and then uh, recruited Shannon and, and she would come train. And we had you some other- You saw the future though, before it happened. You knew it was gonna get bigger. You knew you were going to need help. I never knew you were tired. I never knew you were 
your voice or your throat or you were exhausted. Yeah. You just knew it was going to keep getting bigger and that you would need trainers. Yeah. Yeah, I need, so I, 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 yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I know that, I knew that we were going to do something special. It's because that part, do you remember the parking lot workout? We had like 150 women in a parking lot. I told this story at, on stage at Summit. Um, and we had like basically like 10 lines of 15 people. It was a plyometrics day. Oh, we were doing yeah, this sprints outside afterwards. I make all 150 people do like max rep jump squats. And this is a five minute, seven minute finisher. I had no rules or rhyme or reason back then. <laughs> it was, ah, I don't know, finishers 10 minutes today, right? You, nowadays it's like three to five minutes max or two to five minutes. Quads will never forget it. Yeah. And so everybody's doing jump squats and then I line everyone up. I'm like three, two, one, go. And they go. And then three, two, one, go. And the next wave goes. And by the time we get to the third wave, everyone's like trying to run, but their legs are heavier than their upper body and they're getting top heavy and they boom, they just all fall over. But what then happened next, like changed my life because the three groups that went ahead, they actually turned around, sprinted back and started grabbing. And I believe you were up there somewhere in the, in the front. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, cause I don't remember every detail, but they started running back and grabbing the women who were falling down. Like they were cut, they were bleeding. They awesome. were, they were like, gr it was the, pretty grimy. Like yeah. they were like cut the everywhere. Blood, the camaraderie. Oh yeah. And the, the blood was pretty awesome too. I'm not gonna lie. It was like, yeah, let's go hardcore women. Like getting after it, it was Fell great. On top of the world after yeah. that one. Yeah. And then Morgan and I got in the car. We looked at each other. We were like, wow, that, was something. that what was that? that yeah. I've never felt yeah. that before. But so you were right, and I could become a trainer, and I did, and I passed, and I like found this new thing about myself and absolutely loved it. Gave me the flexibility to be at home with the kids a lot. I think it was 10 to, maybe eight to 10 camps at first. I think 15 was the most I was doing, but it was like getting up three in the morning, sometimes at night, you before you go to bed, and you're like, I don't wanna do it. But the second you walk in that gym, you see those faces, you hear that music, you do it every single day, over and over and over. Something totally different, totally fun and found a passion at age, mm -hmm. whatever it was, 28, 30, I guess it was at the time. Mm -hmm. And we keep we, going. We've been doing it ever since. And then, and then, and then I hung up uh, in the Huntersville gym. Remember the uh, now awarding franchises banner that I hung up? Yep. So like, yeah, nowadays, like we have these like acrylic neon signs that look like they're super sharp and fancy. Yeah. And back then I took the shoestrings out of my old Nikes <clears throat> and I went to Alpha Graphics and I printed a, like a banner it was terrible graphics. It, it was, it was, they were pretty bad. And I hung it from the ceiling of the Huntersville gym with shoestrings. Mm -hmm. Right in the middle. And it was like right in the middle. And it said, now awarding franchises. And you were one of the first, um, I, always, I always think about it like this. So we had like this wave of people in 2015 that were from Morgan's gym in Cornelius, my gym in Huntersville, and then, and then the Mooresville, North Carolina gym. Those three gyms, uh, and then it was Concord and, and, and Mallard Creek shortly after that. But it was really those three gyms. We had like 80 uh, locations awarded out of those the members from those three gyms. And it was all, and I'm going to let you tell your story because it was all very similar to Shannon where, you know, Shannon was, was and still is living in North Carolina. But she wanted to bring this thing that she found like back that helped her out so much like to her hometown. So why don't you, you'll tell the story way better than me. So when you see that, you know, raggedy banner hanging up in, in Huntersville and you're like, okay, well, well, I'm gonna ask Devin about this. What was, what was the game plan? What was going through your head? This isn't gonna work without Devin being the trainer, to be oh, honest, okay. to be honest. Which is why, well, it took me a little while, but one quick funny story about Huntersville. Child watch room was what, 200 square feet? Yeah. We had to knock those walls down because the membership base kept growing and growing. We needed room for camps. So I think you made the child watch room bigger. I took then it upstairs. Then the walls were torn it down. Up, it went upstairs. And it went upstairs. Yep. Then the, we blew more walls. Like it just kept growing, getting bigger and bigger. And it was really awesome to see, really awesome to be a part of. And like the relationships, the friendships that didn't exist before people found each other in there. And as a trainer, to be a part of all that, watching someone come in for their first day, to one week in to 14 days in, it's like life-changing. I knew I had to be a bigger part of it for mm -hmm, sure. So mm -hmm. I just started training a little more. I'm like, this franchise thing, obviously took me 15 Saturdays to join. <laughs> <laughs> I like to uh, let things play out before I jump in, I guess. Very certain. So 80 franchises in, I'm like, okay, maybe this does work without Devin. But talking to Tommy about it, my husband, who, owns these with me, um, we thought, let's go to LA. You gotta be in a big fitness town, right? You have to be somewhere that fitness is really popular. 
And so we were like, hometown of Western New York or Los Angeles, Devin, Los Angeles, Morgan, I went to your hometown because <laughs> you're big and she's realistic. They both have worked. Yeah, Those she's realistic. You see how nice Shannon is to me? <laughs> see, you think really big and she's like realistic. So I like it. They both have worked and there's gyms <laughs> yeah, in both places for now. Sure. But um, I love Morgan's way of thinking. Yeah. Do your hometown. And like when that light bulb went off, I was like, oh my gosh, Buffalo, Rochester. The community is exactly going to be the perfect fit for Burn because we snubble, shovel each other out of snow, 10 feet of snow. We cheer for uh, losing football teams for 20 years. Like we have got each other's backs. And that's what Burns all about. Yeah. And so had to be Buffalo, had to be yeah, Rochester. And, two, and it's it, been yeah, in like In like LA, you know, if you go back and you look at human history, like tribes of people are like 200, like 150, 200, 300, 400 people. In LA, there's like so many people there that I'm so glad you listened to Morgan because I'm not sure if it had, would have worked there right away. Just because, well, I know. Why because would, I, even thought of I don't know, I don't know. It's a good thought because it's like where the opportunity is, right? You have half your brain, half Morgan. Yeah. So yeah. that's where it came from. Let's yeah, I think, well, I think it was a good decision because like think about how in LA, like people are an inconvenience to one another because there's too many of them. So people are getting in each other's ways. So, you know, it's not like here, it's such a, um, it's like such a beautiful hometown vibe. Like just even driving around the city, it's like, yup, this is a hometown. Like yeah. this is where America lives. You know, like people you probably, I'm, here, I'm you sure stay here, people probably know. go to the city and come back or whatever, mm -hmm. or they go, you know, to, um, uh, even if it's not New York city, they move out of state. Like this is one of those places where they just come back because it's just so, so tight. Yeah, they're, they're so, so tight. tight. They're, you know, I mean, this happens everywhere, but like family barbecues, family dinners, always family, always get togethers. Friendships are tight. Families really, really tight. And I haven't, I've lived in Charlotte. I've lived here, lived in New York City. There's something special about this place up here. It's the community's one of a kind. And that's why this team is amazing. That's why this works so well up here. And I uh, would love to have more of them. I've had up here. I think whoever joins in on the team New York will never regret it. I've had an amazing time here um, so far. This is my second time being to upstate New York and second time being in both of your gyms. And they've grown even through the pandemic, through, through that, the nightmare in the fitness industry that we went to. And I want to ask you about that. Um, <clears throat> but not only, not only do I walk into your gyms and do I feel like the burn vibe, I feel like, I feel like the next level vibe. And it's, and it's I think, largely because of these people that are sitting here in the room today. Um, but they wouldn't have an admiration for it necessarily, or at least be here long-term, because you have a lot of people that have been here for a very long time. And they wouldn't be here without your leadership. So what have you learned about leadership, you know, going from being a trainer with me on the floor out of a gymnastics center in a parking lot to now, you know, you have almost eight, over 800 members at two gyms and you guys are growing like crazy right now. And I have no reason to think or, or, or foreseen circumstance that's gonna say, uh, this is gonna slow down anytime soon. Yeah. So what have you learned about leadership over your burn journey? Well, thank you for saying that because that's like the biggest compliment I could ever get in this business. For this to feel like what you created is exactly what I had, could only hope and imagine. And you don't need me. See, you don't need me. I told you all along, way all back right, then. So you have those amazing trainers over there. And I get it. I'll amazing. get to that because there okay. is a reason okay. and it still does involve you. Okay. But um, so leadership is something I've had to work the hardest at craft wise and honing in my skills. When I talk about the Bank of America days, I was on the sales team and I was an individual contributor and I had a goal and I hit it and blah, blah, blah. It was fun, but I never had to manage people. I never had to lead people. I never had to, um, what's called lead by example or right, right process. And you know, we kind of operate the same way. Like we just do things and expect people to kind of read our minds. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't yeah. work doesn't when work. you're trying to grow something or inspire others or build another team's skill sets, which I have learned that I love so much. It's probably the number one most rewarding thing this entire project that we've taken on. But um, so leadership wise, finding the right people, working on and really reaching out and having mentors like Chelsea, Theo and you and Morgan, how do I do this? How do I get better at this? And that's fantastic about Burn Nation is that there are, we all are, have our things that we're really good at. I get calls on certain things. I make calls on certain things. Ted, uh, so many FPs will take my call and help me out and have been through the situation 
we're, you're not alone, I'm not alone, thank goodness. And I think I've done a much better job for the team. They've come a long way. They stick around. And um, I mean, it's because of them that you feel that vibe. I put a lot of importance into getting them to HQ, getting them to Summit, listening to the monthly things that you have going on. The closer I keep them to you and HQ, mm -hmm. um, the more the vibe mm -hmm. is passed on from Charlotte all the way up to New York. Yeah. Does that answer? Yeah, that? no, I, and I appreciate that because it, I, it makes me feel good to be needed, I guess. I think everybody wants to be needed in, in some way. And, you know, it's feel, it feels really good to be here and have all of your members who have been here since fighting with us through, I mean, it's no secret that, that, that 2020 and 21 and parts of 22 even, um, we were like, we, were, we, got, we got, you know, punched in the chin, you know, from a, yeah. from a business perspective. I think the whole world did, right? But if you go look and you examine what happened, it was a giant recession for fitness and like any social life, period. Mm -hmm. any, anytime you were gathering together in a place, bars, gyms, those were like the two things that, which ironically, like the worst thing for people and the best thing for people, like we're well, like put it. together we and like, right now? well, you know, I think it's just, there? I think it just um, as a, it's, it's hard. Well, it's a, it, it, it illuminates, it illuminates the uh, circumstances that we had to go through to maintain what you've built. And through such a long period of like that, the only way you get through, whether it be a pandemic or a recession or just a bad time, you know, as we go through ups and downs in our life, it's the fortitude that you gain from those times that is the real, um, that is the real takeaway. And for me, it's the real investment. We're bonded for life. We Bond. say that all the time. We made it through that. Yeah. Bros, bros, burn bros, burn sisters, best friends for life. For life. For what we made it through. But so it happened in New York first and hardest. But HQ said, hold the line. I said, hold the line. They held the line. So it came from you guys down, but it did happen here first. And they had to be on board and they were. Mm -hmm. And trainers don't want to be behind a camera. No trainer. No trainer wants to be behind a camera training from their basement, but they did it. Yeah. The members needed us. Our, our team knew that. And they, we Zoomed every single camp, every single day. It wasn't the same as being together, but they felt like they were together because they couldn't leave the house yeah. and Zoom was as together. Well, the supply demand be. curve shifts, right? Like, like there's no more doors open anywhere. So the next best thing is this digital version of it mm -hmm. that the value of that goes way up because what's the next best option? No one ever said, can we just record the first Zoom and they can press play at 8, 9, 10, noon, 4, 3, 5, 30, 6, 30. Mm -hmm. They wanted to hear their voice. Mm -hmm. They wanted form corrections. They wanted to be like, hey, girl, hey, yeah. in Zoom. Yeah. It, it, they could have asked to make things easier, but they did it right for the members because yeah. they truly do love each other. So what's one transformation story that you've seen out of your membership base? It could be Webster Pits, right? I know there's hundreds of people and you mm -hmm. have almost – a little bit over 800 members, and I don't mean to put you on the spot and say just choose one person, but you know, there's always to me that one person that overcame the biggest of odds. Everything is like stacked against them, and they still, you know, are showing up for themselves and uh, dedicated to not only themselves but to their communities as a whole. Is there anybody that that sticks out to you that's like a transformation? story extraordinaire that you'd like to point out and give a little cred to? Yeah, for sure. Tell me. Um, well, just for some background, there is no one who walks in this door, for the most part, unless you come one day and you don't come back, that doesn't have something life-changing happen, big or small, which is pretty incredible and probably the most rewarding thing that you could really ever be a part of. There's big ones or small ones, but everyone experiences something, which is awesome. But you just met a woman named Kalia at the 930 camp. Mm -hmm. And she's, her transformation has been incredible when anyone else might quit, she didn't. Mm -hmm. Health problems, battled cancer, is in remission and safe and healthy. Three babies who are seventh grade, third grade, and five years old. Mm -hmm. And she's back every, as, as many times as she can come. She's a full-time nurse. Her, like I said, her youngest is five. So three to five camps a week, hustler, kept coming through COVID, coming through the Zoom days, and now walks through the doors when she can super dedicated and uh i think she would call it her happy place like a lot of us do but it feels like impact it feels like big impact it's so worth it how's this impacted you you have now two businesses hundreds of people that you're responsible for how's it impact like how does it feel to be in that position of responsibility how's it impacted you 
working with these guys, like I said. So personally, I'll get there, but the most rewarding thing, hands down my favorite thing in the entire world is watching them take on new things that they did not think they could do, that they absolutely crush, which you did for me a couple times, Morgan has done for me a couple times. I can't believe I did that. They believed I could do it, I did not, and again, so to be able to do that, they do it on the floor with the members. I don't live here, so I can do it with them and through them and to watch them flourish and, like I said, just add things to their skill set, their resume, their confidence, their lives, their relationships is awesome. It's absolutely awesome. For me, burn in general, man, I have had some ups, downs, starts, stops. I don't want to go. I, I tell Matt Morris, I either go 100 times a week to burn or none. <laughs> Can't quite find that. So the most amazing thing is when you leave for a week or a month, you walk back in the door, it's Beasley. You walk back in the door, it's Hearn. You walk back in the door, it's Carolyn, it's Pete. There are most of the trainers, because there's so little turnover, they're still waiting there for you. And they know what you're capable of. Maybe they push me, give it, give me a day or two. They're always freaking there. <laughs> we'll find you. And then you. I walk out the door and I'm crying. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, why did I stop for a week? But that's life, it happens. Don't beat yourself up. Those doors are always open, mm -hmm. which is freaking so cool. Mm -hmm. It saves every time, works every time. Um, Tommy, you're, you're talk to me about your Tommy and your and your children, mm -hmm. um, because I want everyone to know how much of a family oriented entrepreneur that you are and, and that Tommy mm -hmm. is, and how have you seen this impact your family life, um, your kids' life, your children's life, through Burn? Do I tell him he's been uh, demoted to intern? <laughs> <laughs> Who, Tommy or me? Tommy. Oh. <laughs> he got demoted. You're giving a demotion to intern? It's, yeah. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. Um, he does a lot of very important things. Um, so it's completely changed the family dynamic. My flexibility is where we need it to be in life for happiness. I need reward. I need challenge for myself personally. Um, but I love to be the one who can do homework with the kids. So and pick up the kids and not have an empty house for them to walk, walk home to. But so two days a week, I have someone help me with their driving so I can stay focused on burn eight to five. Those other three days, I get to be the one that picks up the kids, which is awesome and make sporting events and stuff like that. Um, so flexibility and almost having completely kind of lost myself since the corporate world, give me that balance. And this is from HQ, the lists, the, <laughs> The, uh, the, just the reward and the goals and uh, that, like I thrive on that mm -hmm. and that comes from HQ. And mm -hmm. so that's personally what's awesome for me, marriage flexibility, kids flexibility, financially, um, probably say, uh, you know, oh, well over the banking days, but um, uh, what was I gonna say? We always joke that we thought it was gonna be 90% of our money and 10% of our time. And it's 90% of our time, but it's not, doesn't even feel like work. Mm -hmm. But when you own a business, it's around the clock. You never stop thinking about it. You think about when you sleep. Mm -hmm. Probably my most productive thinking, but it's fun thinking. Well, I am uh, just, you know this, I've been an admir admirer of the way that you've ran two locations f from a few states away. And I know that it means something when I say I'm so proud of the communities that you've built here, like genuine, like my goodness, so proud, like to, just to be here and have all of these members um, showing up every day for themselves with, with the risk that, that you took, without the risk that you took, it wouldn't be possible. So I wanna say thank you. Thank you for being a part of this organization, not just a part of it, but really starting it with me. I really give you credit for that because you were like one of the first people to look at the young 24 year old kid that didn't know anything and say, Hey, that guy's something, man. He's, he's, he's going to go do something with this business, and I want to be a part of it, and I'm grateful for that every day. So I thank you, and uh, the, last question I have, the last question I have for you, is there anything that you want to say to Burn Nation while you have this captive audience right here um, that you'd like to take us out? Mm. Um, I would like to say, if you don't have someone in your life that believes in you more than you believe in yourself, a family member, a coworker, you should find it. You should not stop looking until you find it. It will change your life. It doesn't have to be your husband or within the walls of your house. It could be a trainer at Burn, a trainer at another gym. Find it, 
because it is priceless. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm getting older. I don't know if it's an age thing, but I didn't have it growing up and I didn't have it before burn. So it happens to be burn for me and it can be burn. You guys probably deliver that every single day. If it's not at burn, but it is, it just is. So make sure you have that in your life. And when you wrote the post about treat people who are the most special to you as if they're special and not normal, like that's just a different way of thinking. That's a different way of thinking and that's how we treat each other and that's what lifts us up every day and has, I think, changed a lot of our lives. It's changed mine for sure, so. Mine too, mine too. Thank you so much for this. Uh, guys, Shannon Lamondola, multi-unit partner, as you've seen with Burn Bootcamp, uh, but even a better leader and I know admired by her team and all of her members and super admired by me, Morgan, our family as well. And so thank you for your time. Uh, we gotta get a noon camp going here in a minute. I'm about to get on the mic and tear it up. And I really appreciate your time and your energy. If you guys wanna follow Shannon, you wanna give them your Instagram handle real quick? Shannon Lamondola one or Burn Boot Camp Pittsburgh or Burn Boot Camp Webster. All right, you heard it first. So if you're ever in this area, hey, this is the spot. You gotta come get your butt kicked at, okay? Burn Rock. All right, guys, hey, make sure you subscribe to YouTube and podcast. Don't just subscribe, flex on it. Okay, you gotta flex on it. You gotta get that subscription down. It's free. We're bringing these podcasts to you every single week. Thank you for being here. Two claps on two. Claps.